Dude, do you know what a good work is? Do you know what God's good work in you is? Hi, welcome back to Sea Life TV. I'm Daryl Chesser. I appreciate you tuning back in. Today, we are going to do another one of my writings I'm going to read to you and expound on. And it's called, Good Work, Dude. Good Work. But before we get going, I want to uh, just tell you once again about our website, sealifeministries.org. sealifeministries.org. All kinds of resources there, over 700 uh, sermons from 40 years of ministry in my family and others. And then, of course, there's the archive for uh, uh, Sea Life TV, which is uh, over 100 episodes of teaching from my mother, from me, uh, from my sister Debbie, all of them uh, powerful teachers. All of that free at sealifeministries.org. Please go check it out. Oh, Good work, dudes. That's what we're talking about today. So first of all, we want to start in the scriptures, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. And right now, this one is in the NIV. You can read it whatever you want. But it goes like this. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace, God's favor, we have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace exposed or expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith in the cross, in the blood, in the body of Jesus Christ. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no man can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Lord, bless your word today. Bless the reading of your word. Bless the word as it gets to the hearers and may it expound and open up in their hearts to be encouraged and strengthened in Jesus' name. God prepared in advance for Jesus to save all mankind on that cross. He prepared in advance. We see in the scriptures and uh, even Revelations and some other places where it says from the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ was crucified. That is a prepared in advance good work. This is what we just read. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So this Jesus on the cross is a prepared, in advance, good work that he did. God prepared in advance for Noah to build the ark in order to save humanity from being changed into brute animals. That is a prepared, in advance, good work. God prepared in advance to provide himself as a sacrifice, never intending for us to to be sacrificed. So Abraham was prepared in advance by God to sacrifice his own son, believing the whole time that this great God would raise Isaac from the dead. That is a prepared in advance good work because Abraham believed this mighty God. God prepared in advance a a small businesswoman in Jericho to save her whole family while selling out her own people and thus joining the lineage of his own son, Jesus Christ. Rahab 
was prepared in advance by God to hide the spies because she believed God more than she believed in the walls of Jericho. She'd heard the stories since she was a little girl. They'd been hearing the stories about that God that destroyed Egypt, that opened the Red Sea. And then more recent rumblings about King Sion and King Og, or King Og that were destroyed just across the Jordan River from them. This trouble was getting closer. This God that she'd heard about, she was terrified. But she believed he was more powerful than her city or the walls of Jericho. God had prepared her in advance because she believed. She believed God more than her own people. And I could go on about Joseph, uh, Moses, David, Esther, Paul, and including all of you who have believed in Jesus Christ. God has prepared in, in advance the good work you are to do because you believe God's great love more than anything else in the world. Maybe you haven't seen anything yet that would indicate God has a good plan for you or a good work he has prepared for you to do. Abraham believed and was counted by God as righteous 35, at least 35 years before he raised that knife to his son. He was counted righteous. He was counted as righteous because he believed God. But this good work that James identifies as his works, showing his faith by his works, was 35 years after he believed and was counted as righteous. The good work was already being prepared in him. The good work was already there for him to do. And 35 years later, he pulled that knife back. In that time, he basically, Abraham, pimped out his wife to a king or two. Two times he did that. He also hatched a plan with his wife to do the good work of God on their own by trying to bring the promise of God to pass by human effort. That's when he gave in to his wife, where his wife said, let's take my nurse and you sleep with her, Hagar. And she'll have a son and it'll be our son. So they tried to bring about God's work, his good work, his promise by human effort. But God still called him righteous, even during all these things. And it wasn't till years after Abraham actually saw and held the promised son Isaac in his arms that he did this good work that God had prepared in advance for him to do. What I'm trying to say is that God opened our eyes to see when, we, when someone preached the good news of God's son. We believed and received him as Savior and Lord because of that. And none of that was our idea, our plan, or our work. Salvation was and is the gift of God, and that gift is Jesus Christ. We are God's good work. We are God's good work of grace and love by faith in Christ Jesus. So if this was all God's doing, all his prepared plan in advance for good works, then we will see those things worked in and through us as we rest in his good work, Christ Jesus, on the cross and his resurrection. Grace, grace, grace. If you haven't seen the good work you are to do yet, Philippians 1.6 says this, He which hath begun a good work in you has begun a good work in you. will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Good work, dude. Good work. Hang on. All right. Before we go today, I want to have communion. It's a good work. The scriptures we read talk about this free gift of salvation, this free gift of grace. Jesus Christ, it is by the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, by faith in his broken body 
and faith in his spilled blood on that cross that we are saved. So today I want to talk to you. If you are listening to this and, and you are not saved, I want you to think about it. God loves you. Jesus Christ died on that cross. He has good works for you to do. He has a prepared and advanced good work. The reason you're listening to this video today, for whatever reason, maybe a friend shared it, maybe you stumbled upon it, maybe there was nothing else on and you're bored. But the reason you stumbled on this today is because God wants you as his own, his son. He sent Jesus Christ to die for you, his very best, and he wants to adopt you by faith, by you believing that God has done all of this for you. It was his plan. He came and found you. Right now, I'm talking on his behalf, saying he wants you. If you would like to do that, it's a very simple thing. Pray with me. Father in heaven, I come to you now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, of which I've just heard about. But I believe what he, this guy Daryl has said about him. I believe that this Jesus Christ died on that cross for me. I believe that it was his body that was ripped apart and broken that carried all of the judgment of the sin in my life and the sin that I was born in. And I believe that it is his blood that washed all of that away. Didn't sweep it under the carpet. It washed it away. So, Father, today I ask you to, to give me the gift of your salvation. I receive Jesus Christ today as my Savior, as my Lord. And I want to thank you. Thank you. Amen. And welcome to the kingdom, those of you that did that with me today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release the Holy Spirit to you as well, to be imparted to you, to be filled with that Holy Spirit, the power of God, the explosive power of God to reveal to you, to help teach you as you read the scriptures. Now, you're also eligible to take this communion with us. If you want to grab a cracker, hey, this is not live. So you can put it on pause, run to the kitchen and get you some juice and crackers or some bread and wine. It, it, it's okay. And then let's take this communion together. All right, first I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna declare over it. The Bible tells us that uh, in the, at the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread and he was with his disciples and he was going to the cross in the next day or so. And he took this bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. This bread is my body, which is broken for you. Eat all of this. Now, let me explain this uh, significance. Like the Passover lamb. The night they ate the Passover lamb and they put the blood on that doorpost back in Israel 1,500 years before. Well, yeah, 1,500 years prior to the cross. The blood caused the death angel to pass over, the destroying angel. But it was that roasted lamb that torn apart and burned or roasted, gone through the judgment of the fire, lamb, that as they ate the flesh of that lamb, it said that these slaves that had been enslaved for hundreds of years in Egypt, the next day after that meal, that they walked out of there wealthy and not one feeble one or sick among them. There's no way. It's a supernatural thing, a supernatural meal. That's what we're taking today. This is the broken body, and not literally, but by faith. Jesus told us to do this. This bread is, a, is telling all the spirit world and, and everybody that's watching, hey, we believe Jesus' body was broken for us and that his body in this sense is food. He took our sickness on his body. He took our sin and the judgment for our sin on his body. He, took, uh, he became poor, the Bible says, so that we through him might be made rich in all things. It said he was pierced for us. He was chastised for us. He was uh, just beaten to a bloody pulp for us so that we in this world, this body, could live in this world with the benefits of that roasted lamb, that judged lamb, that post-cross Christ. 
This is the lamb, the body broken for us. It is by this body and faith in his body that we are healed. And so today we take this and we thank you, Father. We eat this bread in commemoration of what happened and in absolute belief that it is by eating this body, by eating and communing with the body, that we are saying, hey, I have communion with Christ Jesus on that cross. It is the cross of Christ that saved me, and it was his body that took it for me. Amen. Take it. Amen. And after he'd taken the bread, in like manner, he raised the cup. And he said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. That's what Jesus said. Now, in here is the blood of the, the grape. Whether you have juice or wine, this is the blood of the grape, which represents the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood, the grape is squashed and stomped, and then it's, it's fermented, and then it's bottled up. But not even the grape could hold it. That thing popped, because there's life, the Zoe life, the life of God itself was in Jesus. Jesus' blood alone was what could wash us. Jesus' blood alone was what could save us. Jesus, once for all time, for all men, willingly went to that cross and his blood was spilled so that all men might call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Today, our sins are forgiven. Our, our conscience is purged from sin consciousness. We are accepted and approved in the beloved and we have communion with Christ Jesus and with our Father in heaven through the body and the blood. As the Jews say, lachaim, or to life, I believe, and then uh, also shalom, to peace and wholeness in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus also said, as often as you do this, you do show forth the Lord's death come. We lift up that cross again. We lift up the body of Jesus Christ and the spilled blood. That is our victory. We lift him up. He said, Jesus himself said, if I be lifted up on that cross, I will draw all men to me. It is that cross by which we were saved. And you that were saved today, it's because the cross of Christ Jesus, his broken body and his spilled blood, this is a supernatural thing. You were saved. You were forgiven. Your sin uh, consciousness has been purged. God has accepted and approved you. Find your good church that preaches the cross of Christ Jesus. Not how to be like Jesus, but to believe in Jesus. Jesus did it. If he's just a teacher or an example to you, that's not saved. It is actually in here. You've been forgiven. You trusted in the broken body and the blood of Jesus Christ. God's Holy Spirit has come to you. You are a supernatural new man in Christ Jesus. And he's prepared a good work in advance for you to do. Good work. Good work, dude.